Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator. And today I am in the Beaver, the Beaver SM, I'm going to say SMS. This is the Thronda version of the, of the Beaver. And this one is on floats, the DH, the DCH, uh, no, the DHC2. Um, no, yeah, the DHC2. Um, and today I am going to recreate a flight that I took some time ago. So, some of you probably have never seen, actually most of you probably had never seen a video where I um, did a flight up in Canada. Okay, so I am back and this time I got the camera working. All right, so yeah, this is the, um, I've already said this, this is the Beaver and we're on float. So let's go ahead and get inside the aircraft and let's get this party started. Okay, so it spun in in the middle of the, of the runway. Don't ask me why, but um, but that's where we're going to leave it. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. All right, so we'll go up here. Our covers are off. Uh, engine mode realistic. When the reflections are on, panel is on. Startup running off. Charts are off. Brakes are on. All exterior lights are off. And let's go ahead and turn that on just for the moment. And let's go to our livery. Uh, I think I'm happy with the livery that I do have. Um, yeah, so so we'll leave. We'll, we will accept this uh, Harbor Era looking color livery. Um, so I'm not going to change any of that now. Here, I am going to add fuel to my um, my left tank. I'm going to add fuel to my right tank. I'm going to add fuel to my um, mid tanks. And I believe, let's see if, if uh, I believe I can add a tank, belly tank, and I'm going to add a few gallons to my belly tank, and bring that up, and I'm watching, let's see, oh, didn't mean for that to happen. Okay, so I'm watching this envelope here to make sure that I stay within my weight and balance. But you know what? Trouble thing, I have not added any passengers yet. So let's go ahead and load some passengers. And I tell you, the beaver is amazing. Look at that. Um, let's put a child in. Let's put a kid in this back seat here. And we'll make that kid 82 pounds of 80. Okay. So I'm actually still within my envelope for weight and balance. Um, but I do need to add some gas to it. I tell you what happened was when I loaded the configuration that that basically reset my gas, my fuel. And now I'm outside, so let's let's um, see if we can't find a happy balance. I want as much fuel as I can take. So that means that that I am going to have to, t I can only take Yeah, I can only take one passenger. And I probably I probably am not going to need all this fuel. But 
I but I'd rather have it and not need it <laughs> than I need it and not have it. Now, I think one of the things that that hurt me last time was I had one of the things that hurt me last time was that I had a lot of weight. I got these floats and these floats have extra weight. So, you know, that's weighing the aircraft down, causing it to burn more gas. And it's not as aerodynamic as the Taurus. So I'm thinking that um, that the floats just increase dramatically the fuel the fuel burn. All right, so uh, let me get my my knobs back on. And makes it go to full rich. All right, so let's get started here. Um, and I'm not going to use a checklist. I really should. All right, so with the floats, I think the floats, there's a different order that we use. And that was um, front, center, and well, or was it real? I think it was real center and front. Not real front and center. Uh, I think that was. It's a little different. That much I do recall. All right, so. And so we got that. All right, let's get our beacon light on. The master can come on. Let's, uh, let's get this guy primed. One. I usually do this about six times, two. Three. Four. Five and six make sure it's locked and we are good all right let's get it wobbled huh. wobble up the beaver something about that just don't sound right all right all right so and let's um mixture for rich we don't want to we don't want this thing to idle high um, when we start it, so, and it's warm enough, I can go ahead and turn the prop to, to four, and prop clear, and just make sure ain't nobody out there. I want about um, about five or six on my RPMs. And check my oil pressure. Or temp. Oil pressure is here. circulate on in. Uh, Selling my head temp. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay. And pretty much already within operating 
but one, I still in the head tips to be at least at <coughs> at this red tick or this one before we take before we actually throttle up. Let's see if I got enough prop momentum momentum to move the aircraft. So I'm just gonna release the brake, see if she moves, and she does not. Okay, so let's reset my brake. Alright, so we're waiting on the engine to warm up a little bit. I can shut this guy down. I didn't really need it. I just like seeing it. And we taxi over here. I'll pick up these pa well, the passengers already on board. So as I throttle up. Pressure's coming up a tad. I want that cylinder head temp to come up a little bit. Alright, so I got a caution light here. suction okay but it goes off once I idle up some so that's good close that gap taxi lights can come on no taxi lights so we'll do landing lights instead landing lights are on uh, it's daytime so there's no need for nails and strobes but I will use strobes during takeoff and we've got a windsock here. Looks like we got some variable winds. And looks like we're gonna go to this end of the runway to take off, okay? All right, let's get our AV, uh, alternator on. Avian, uh, avian, it's on. Double check on the alternator. So, leave me a comment if you know whether or not the Navigraph works with the GTN 750. I, um, I'm trying out a GTN 750 subscription, and I'm sorry, a, a Navigraph subscription, and I know it works with the um, with the five thir with the default with all the Laminar's uh, GPSs. But I don't know if it worked with this one. Alright, so let's see what I think I in uh cylinder our cylinder temperature is finally high enough to to go ahead and at least taxi. Um, Alright, so let's get our taxi on guys. Break off. Brakes already off. It's confirmed on the Bravo yoke, uh, the Bravo quadrant throttle. And I gotta remember with these floats, it takes a lot more torque to get it moving.
primary traffic. Beaver is taxiing to runway zero seven. No warehouse traffic. any other aircraft I would say that I would need probably as much runway as I can get but the beaver is just incredible when it comes to uh, climbing all right I don't have a yellow brick road but I can't tell that I can I'm not on the center of the um, Temperature is, should be in the green now. So when I hit temperatures in the green, let's make sure oil pressure comes up. Oil pressure is in the green, so I'm going to let it keep it. Keep it at a thousand here. Tanks look good. And take off lights are set. Feel elevation. Let's see what I feel. Feel elevation is. So let's set our altimeter accordingly. That's seven. Ten twenty. That's about right there. Four and and six. All right, so let's see if we can't get a spoken aid. So I didn't think I'd be to get one. traffic beaver is taking off runway 24 departing to the west straight out Norway
off strobes. I'm just gonna leave strobes on. And it just dawned on me that I didn't put the um, the plan in my in my GPS. That's what we'll hold 
all the way in. And now that I've adjusted my now that I've adjusted my my power set my RP my 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 um, my RPMs now that I've dialed that back I can come off that right rudder a little okay so one thing about flying VFR is generally speaking what 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 you want to do is find something to focus on and fly to it. And this plane, as you can see, it's a little tough to do that. And I'm going to give it a little bit more power because I am having trouble out of 1,500 feet. And you can see my angle of attack indicator doesn't want me to raise my nose very much higher. I do have a four autopilot on this aircraft. All right, now I finally got something I can focus on to fly to. So, looks like if I fly 
towards this lagoon, towards this delta, then that's going to put me pretty much on course. In the meantime, I do want my head and bug set. flights that if you didn't have a strong stomach you might be in a world of, of hurt I 
pretty close to stall here, so I'm gonna dial this this down just a little. matters worse I've actually got this big headwind you say I'm only 83 knots over the ground even though I'm 90, um, 90 knots indicated I think I got enough fuel to get there. We'll find out. We got 93 nautical miles to go at 93 knots. So that's roughly an hour. We shall find out. This is a good time for me to see if if there's a way to to update the Navigraph Iraq Iraq. on that rear tank. Okay. 
gas vent quickly. tanks okay so hmm. see I didn't put fuel in these other tanks but I didn't have the well you know I got 669 pounds of payload which it, which would be passengers and and cargo including myself one eighty five times two is three plus 80 here is 450 and then I had another 129 pounds there <coughs> so that's where they get the 669 or whatever figure they got okay and I know this is breaking the immersion but I said I was only going to take one passenger, and maybe, and with only one passenger, I don't need a lot of fuel. All right, now my center of gravity is off, but, and I know that you guys are having a hard time seeing this, let's see if I can. Okay, I 
I got tip. I got the. Um, so I got some gas in my in my wing tips. Gas fuel. <laughs> okay, so my rear's gone. I'm working on my front. I still got 20. Six. Still got 44 gallons here and 259 pounds of 43 gallons in my belly. So yeah, maybe it we may be able to do this. We're gonna push guys. We're gonna push forward. about it almost an hour in, into the um, flight. All right, so we're on autopilot. Our air seem to have smoothed out a, a whole lot. And, and I was looking to see if there was a way, at least in the utilities, to upgrade update the the ARAC don't see a way to do it so what I really need is a Google search so I would do that offline I said Google search and my smartphone heard that and started Google search <laughs> thought maybe they may have added a new keyword but that's not the case all right so I can, I can get rid of this guy about the blackout I, that ha that has happened before I'm not sure why um, and it may be because my computer is actually running dual screens um, you got to remember <coughs> excuse me that it's drawing two pictures of the same thing one for the recording and one for what I'm actually experiencing. All right. And I said I was going to get rid of that. Okay. Now let's see if if that if any of those tanks are refilling. Alright, so my front tank is slap four. So I did drain the fuel out of those wing tips. 
and I put them in the front tank. So I should have started off on that front. Live and learn, right? So I'm going to turn those off. Now, it would be great if I could look and see how much fuel I got in those wean tips. I'm breaking the immersion again, but I got enough. I got to see if it drained them all uh, or some of them. All right. So actually, I'm in the wrong place to figure out what I'm looking for. This is where I want it to be. So it drained. Um, I, I don't remember how much fuel I had in there to start. I think it was 20, 20 not. But anyway, I've got ten, basically 19 gallons left in those wing tanks, and I've turned them off. Plus, with the fuel that I got in the belly. But as you can see that's just working havoc on my weight and balance on my on my uh, on my balance so because of the balance thing should I burn some uh, come on should I burn some gas some, some fuel I keep meaning trying to remember to call it fuel rather than gas, should I burn some fuel from my center tank? So let's um, actually let's let's keep it coming out of this front tank. Yeah, I think as if as I burn it out of that front tank that was started to get more into a balance situation. And I think burning it out of the center tank might be a mistake. So yeah, let's do the front tank first. And now I'm wondering whether I get that information when I said there's a different burn order on the tanks for float planes than for the non-float. And I will have to, at some point, look that up. I want to make sure that my, heads, that my headsets were on. All right. So, as you can see, this is a slog, as it was even the first time. And the first time I flew this flight, it was in snow. Um, had some of the worst weather. And again, this was that that first flight and as you can see the weather was pretty atrocious uh, let's see if I scrub through here and get airborne I think this is the weather here, yep. So I got light snow, and it was um, a 14 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 10 degrees Celsius that day. So, So yeah, the, the weather was really tough. And of course, 
I don't see the snow until I turn on the the landing lights. But today, that was that was incidentally on December 16, I believe, maybe December 20. And today is July 25, July 25th. So the weather's a lot different today. say my votes are under 20 but I've got um, roughly about 28 votes so I'm good and I've got um, I'm producing about 18 maybe 15 16 amps okay but one of the things that's been bothering me on this aircraft is I have not been able to find an outside a thermometer. There's my clock. I look like I'm veering off course a little bit. Let's check. First thing we want to do is make sure that these guys are, are lined up correctly. And looks like it should be about right here. So. Um, so yeah, compass drift. Head and drift was um, was the corporate in this case. All right. Now that should auto line it. Get rid of this. Zoom in on it. So. Maybe the way that I'm looking at it, let's see if I get it directly in front of it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just the way that I'm looking at it. I'm looking from the side. So, so yeah. And let me, I want to fly the nav now. So GPS. Say 24, maybe 25 or 26 gallons is what I've still have on board. Yeah, I think we're gonna be all right on fuel. Still got 12 gallons in the in the um, middle tank, and I've got some fuel in the belly tank. Now, one thing that I don't know how to do. <laughs> And is I don't know how to get the fuel from my belly tank to my main tank. <laughs> so there is documentation. Uh, let's see. I was looking to see if uh, this 
if the beaver is supported at Abitab. Alright, doesn't have to. Abitab can be opened up in a window. And uh, let's see, so I'll grab Wanda Beaver documentation. on a belly tank. Page 10, external. Okay, this toggle, external belly tank, this toggles this. Turn a belly tank on and off. This tank adds an additional 43 US gallons. See fuel system selection for more detail. All right, so back. Back to my table of comment contents. And so that was obviously let me go for that was obviously a a illustration. Alright, okay, so I'm looking for an illustration. Alright, so this must be the toggle that they're referring to at the turn of belly tank on, which I have on, right? on a belly tank, but I don't see it in here. Ah. So, there's something I miss in the state that's, I wonder if something has changed over time because the aircraft can be updated this I think I that turns it off should I click it I am I can always turn it back on yep that's exactly what they did all right so I got a full belly tank and they moved it to the other fuel which makes sense all right and now I need to go back to the table of contents and find the fuel, fuel system management on page 52. So, fuel system management. All right. I would say that we have gotten about halfway there. So I am going to to solve this problem. Okay. Sup the external belly tank supplements an additional 1.75 hours of fuel since since air from the vacuum system is required to transfer the fuel 
it is recommended to use the belly tank before the tip tanks. This is because any failure of the vacuum system will render the belly tanks unus unusable. Okay, it's not a weight and balance issue. All right, if the belly tanks is to be used, you will need to burn down the middle center tank to make room for the fear transfer from the belly tank. Like the tip tanks, there's nothing to, pre to prevent the middle center tank from overfilling and venting the fuel. Okay. So I don't think I've lost in the fuel yet. Okay. The procedure for, for using the belly tank is almost identical to the tip tanks. Select the middle center tank on the primary fuel. So that's why I think the order is burn off the, the center tank first, not, so I had it wrong. I burned off my rear tank first. I should have burned that center tank off. Um, I think that's why they won't, they recommend when you're using the floats to burn the center first. That way, if you got the belly tank, you can refill it. All right, all right. Switch. All right. All right. For using. Okay. So switch to the middle tank. And I think my middle tank is probably four, right? Uh, middle tank is half four. So my middle tank is half full. So let's see if we can get some gas in it right now. Let's rotate the belly tank handle to the vertical position to open the valve. All right, so I think that would be this guy here. Switch to the front of the rear tank. Okay. Rotate the. So actually, I'm not so sure that. Let me go back to the to my front tank. All right. Now. So switch to the front of rear tank. Okay, I'm at the front tank. Rotate the belly tank handle to the vertical position to open the valve. So that's what I need. I need to find the belly tank handle. Right? Because I can't see them saying switch to the front a real tank and then rotate the belly tank handle so that's so given the language I'm thinking there must be some different handle and whoa what the heck is that I think this, if I'm not mistaken, this has something to do with the floats. And the rudders on the float, that's what that is. Yeah, that's the rudders on the float. So that drops the rudders into the water. looking for the belly tank handle. This has to be it right here. All right, let's see if any get, if this is going up any. And 
let's look at a uh, course. All right, yeah. Found our course, guys. And we only have 30 nautical miles. Oh man, we are definitely okay. Let's see what our headwinds are now. Because, in fact, I may, all right, so I can turn this one off for right now. I think this is that handle that they were referring to. Okay. And one way to check is to turn the belly tanks off, see if the handle goes away. And it does. So yeah. Another way that I could have been checking is to just monitor how the gas uh, the fuel is draining out of the tank. That would have been the most logical way to confirm that. So I did learn how to, okay. And you know what guys, I never did pull my controls back to cruise. But, quite frankly, I think I got enough fuel on my front tanks, not even have to worry about my mid middle tanks. But, let's go ahead and refill the middle tanks while in flight. Now that I'm, now that I've used these tanks, it's pretty cool the way it works. Flying over Canada for a minute. I think they were. I think somebody miscounted. <laughs> it seems like a lot more lakes than ten thousand. So, I think I'm close enough now to start thinking about. Landing 30, 31 nautical miles around it from my destination. All right, check fuel. That's been done. All right, and what I want to do is go here, waypoint. Elevation is 888, and runways are 13, 13 and 31. I've got a runway that's closed, so make sure that that. me and even though I'm VFR I can fly the visual just to give me some vertical guidance okay so miles from this guy so I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. Oh I was that three and a half miles. So I wanna be at um, that at or above 
1901 foot. Amazing how they put that one foot in there, right? Um, okay, so, all right. So I should be flying directly to this point here. And that's for runway 13. But I don't even know if I want runway 13. Um, I, what I need to see is see if I can get an ATUS. It was. I didn't hear anything at Norway House. I'm not hearing anything now. Let me check my comms. Yep, comms are on. And we're broadcasting on 122.2. I should be close enough to get a was already. So, what I'm going to do is go to a backup source now, and this, this always screw me up. Alright, so if I'm flying to this point here, why am I flying, uh, anyway, i tell you what I'm going to do. Back to the plan and make this guy a destination and go ahead and fly over the airport. are calm. Visibility is 14. Our temperature is 2986. Elevation is If you're wondering what I'm laughing at, <laughs> because I didn't have enough gas that on that first flight, man, I definitely overcompensated. Um, but that um, that tells me I probably should go ahead and do do the weight and balance calculation for the Beaver. Um, or at least not the weight and balance calculation, but the, um, the fuel requirement calculation. If I know how far I got to fly and I know what my fuel flow is. In fact, you know what? Let me check something. Um, this, ooh, birds, birds, wow. That was close. You guys see that? Been a long time since I've seen a flock of birds in X Plane. In fact, I thought that thought they'd taken out the the birds all together. Uh oh. Where is that? I 
shoot. Alright, strike. Alright. Now, I got water up under me. And I'm on floats, thank God. Alright. Alright, so... I'm gonna go ahead and kill this guy here. I'm gonna turn my fear off. Hopefully that'll put my fur out. And get rid of this guy. And circle down for landing. Alright. And this guy can go off. And why am I playing with the throttle? You know, one thing I'm I I'm always am not sure about is on these constant speed props. Best glide. Feel pressure. On these constant speed props, at least at this time I think I can keep my passengers alive. Alright, gear. Landing lights on, taxi lights on, all my lights on for this because and Mayday, 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 Beaver. Um, Six seven six eight four is suffer the bird strike um, engine out and we'll be landing on the lake. Okay, some five hundred feet. And I need I'm losing a lot of lift with what I'm trying to do. But I... Turn my leave my avionics on. Turn these lights off. Leave the strobes on. Cause I'm on battery. So the only thing I got on is strobes. All right. Now, and drop my rudders, and that way I can turn towards land. So where's the Nearest land, land ho. I think that might be it there. And yeah, it's definitely going to be. Man, it's the second time I've tried to get to the pass and not made it. Now, technically, I didn't like the way that I landed because I felt like I landed, um, I didn't land into the wind. But, well, actually I'm thinking of the winds from my, desti from my destination airport. That's right, the winds at my arrival airport were calm, 
and look at the lake just as still as a piece as a, as ice so so yeah i'm fine all right so um i can wait for search and rescue and with my ELT there it is and let's go ahead and activate that guy that I call search and, search and rescue because I don't think we're going to even get to the to the shore Wow, I can't believe it's the second time I tried to get to the pass and have not made it. Okay. I didn't even realize that I had hit a bird. I should have known. I mean, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> I should get a butt kick, all right? All right. And I was trying to see if I could see the prop feathering. Unfortunately, the Sam think that I've crashed, so there's not really any real way that I can turn off the fire. Um, yeah, but anyway, I do want to, before I ended the flight, I did want to go back and take a look at the flight. I hear, I hear something. Let's see if I can see. Sound like I hear a boat. I'm seeing flashes. I'm like, what is flashing? But it's my TV. <laughs> you know, I'm seeing the reflections off the wall and I'm looking. I'm looking. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Let's get the replay. Except for saw that flash, I did see that flash, and I'm like, what is that flash? Okay, let's look down here, and let's see if if I see anything going on here. My engine temperature is 
is this engine temperature gauge is the only indication that I can see that something is amiss aside from the visible flames <laughs> that's reflecting off the wing there. And it's only reflecting on one side. So let's look at the landing. and wasn't the best of landings but you know because i had the floats i survived if i had flown the um the version without the floats then i wouldn't have had any place to land and of course you can't really yeah, I wouldn't, I would probably would never have even made it to this, to this dry land. But anyway, guys, I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. And until next time. Y'all come back now. Cheers. Ciao.